Hey, my name is Kara. I'm an ultrasound tech, and let's talk today about placental insufficiency, or sometimes it's also called placental dysfunction. And I do want to apologize that I have a cold right now, so I am sounding very congested, but hopefully it doesn't bother you too much, and we can get on with the video. So with placental insufficiency, this is where your placenta is not functioning as well as it should be. The placenta is going to be delivering the oxygen and the nutrients from mom over to baby. So you can imagine that when the placenta is not functioning as well as it should, it can lead to complications in babies. Most often it is going to make baby small, as in baby is restricted in its growth because it is not getting enough oxygen and nutrients like it should be. This can be due to the placenta being damaged. It can also be due to it not functioning properly because it's too small or even the fact that it did not attach to the uterus properly. And in some cases, it is idiopathic, the reason, as in there is no good reason why, and we can't really find a reason as to why the placenta isn't functioning properly, but we do know that it is not functioning properly. It's actually pretty common to have this happen. It's about, I believe, 1 in 10 pregnancies that end up experiencing placental insufficiency. And there really isn't any sort of treatment for placental insufficiency, but you will get monitored very closely in your pregnancy, especially when you get kind of later on in that third trimester. You'll be monitored probably weekly with ultrasound, and how we do this is through umbilical artery dopplers, and that is just to check the resistance between the placenta over to baby, and we need to make sure that those dopplers aren't getting too high in resistance, which would indicate that the placental insufficiency is not only there, but also worsening. There usually aren't any obvious signs during pregnancy of placental insufficiency, but if your doctor notices things such as your fundal height being decreased, so basically you are not measuring as big as they expect, you're not gaining weight as quickly as they would expect, or you're just not gaining weight at all, or if you are experiencing decreased movements from baby, those are all signs that there may be placental insufficiency present, and therefore your doctor will probably send you for an ultrasound just to see how baby is growing. As well as if you're in the third trimester, then we will be doing those umbilical artery dopplers just to check the resistance between the placenta and baby and to see how well things are functioning placenta wise. We can also see where your placenta is positioned as well as just the overall appearance of it. As in, does it appear really small? Is it looking really calcified? All of these indicators that we see on ultrasound can definitely help in the diagnosis of placental insufficiency. There are also certain risk factors that increase your chance of having placental insufficiency, and those are things such as diabetes, high blood pressure, preeclampsia, and going over 40 weeks in your pregnancy. Those are all going to raise the chances that you are going to have placental insufficiency. And I think it goes without saying that this is also going to pose a risk for both mom and baby. On the mom side of things, you are going to be at an increased risk of having preterm delivery, as in you are delivering earlier than expected. And placental abruption is going to be increased as well, which is where the placenta actually tears away from the uterus, and this causes a lot of bleeding, which would put mom and baby at really high risk for a fatality. On the baby side of things, when mom has preeclampsia, there is going to be a higher risk of IUGR, which means intrauterine growth restriction, which makes sense because baby is not getting the nutrients that it needs. There's also a higher risk of fetal hypoxia, which means that baby is not getting enough oxygen to the brain. And in the worst case scenario, the baby can pass away or be stillborn, which was the case for the person who requested this video. And that is obviously one of the worst case scenarios that can happen with placental insufficiency. But for most, they do end up making it to delivery. And although there is no treatment for it, if they are able to figure out what the underlying cause is, like let's say it was because mom has diabetes, then the doctors will usually come up with a plan to treat the underlying cause, as well as closely monitor the pregnancy. And in a lot of cases, baby does end up being delivered early because it is better to have baby be delivered early than have baby be inside and risk being stillborn because of the placental insufficiency. And as always, I really hope that this video provided some more information on placental insufficiency to those who wanted more information. And if you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I can definitely do my best to make a video on them as well.